Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Bootstrap 5 full tutorial series for beginners. So far, we have covered five episodes where we have learned about the responsive grid and the utility classes provided for designing our responsive templates. Today, we'll be doing a live project and hands-on example to put all our knowledge into action. This is a part six of the Bootstrap 5 full tutorial playlist. The playlist link is in the description box below. Make sure you check it out so that you don't miss out on any of your learnings. I'm planning around 40 tutorials and which will include a lot of hands-on examples. So I'm sure you will complete entire your learning on Bootstrap. So we have seen about what's new in Bootstrap. We have also seen about the layout and the grids uh, that are provided by Bootstrap 5. We have seen how to design our grids. We have also learned about the responsive grids and today we are focusing on creating a hands-on layout, which is kind of a simulation of a real-time application. All right, so let's get started, but just a quick recap before uh, we jump into the grid. So Bootstrap provides a lot of uh, utility classes and we know that each row can have up to 12 columns, right? In a particular one row, we can have up to maximum 12 columns, which will occupy that particular width. Now, Bootstrap also provides utility classes like call, XM, XS, and LG, which is large, XL for extra large, and XXL for extra, extra large. So today, we'll use all of these uh, knowledge, we'll use all our learning, and put it into a sample project. We'll try and create this layout. So this is an example from IBM's cloud layout application. So if you look at this, uh, it has a header, right? And it has a sidebar, it has a main content and a table, right? So this is one of the template from IBM Cloud. So we'll try and replicate and try and create close to this particular layout. Uh, the idea here is not to complete this particular entire thing into details, but to give you an overview of how you should go about designing your templates. All right, I hope you'll enjoy. Uh, let's get started. Today, a lot of coding work is there for us. So I'll open a new file. Uh, let's create a new file and let's call it uh, IBM uh, example dot HTML, right? So that's a that's the class we'll use and we'll also need a style sheet. So I'm going to create IBM style dot CSS, right? So these are the two files uh, that we will use. Now to st get started, uh, we'll go to docs. I'll copy the starter template. We don't have to type. So copy the starter template in version five bootstrap uh, documentation. Just copy the starter template. Now this has this is nothing but just the basic skeleton structure. Uh, so what it does is it has a basic structure, which is HTML head body section, right? That's all it has and the links to the CDN, which is bootstrap uh, CSS and JS. All right. So that being said, let's get started. First, we'll need a div class and we'll call it container fluid since we want it 100%, right? If you want it fixed, we will use container class. And I told you in the last episode, the best way to comment to know where it is ending is put dot slash the class name, right? So once we have the container class, then we need to define a row, right? Now a row is nothing but which will have multiple uh, classes or columns inside it, right? So we have it here. So we have a row, we have the container fluid, right? So we need two sections now, one for the sidebar and one for the main content. So let's go ahead and design that class. So here I'm saying I need column width three, okay? And similarly, I need one for, right? I need one for main content, which I will give it class equal to call MD or call nine because we have to add it up to 12, right? So this is for the sidebar and this is for the main content, right? So we can put a comment here and say this is where call nine ends. Similarly, we'll put one more comment and say this is where the sidebar ends. It's always good to have the documentation comments because it will help you know where you're closing the DIVs and where you're opening the DIVs. Right, so now that being said, let's go ahead. Now this is our sidebar, this is our main content. So I'm going to go to the documentation again and grab 
a list, right? I'll just grab a quick list, uh, nothing fancy here, uh, just a basic list. So you can take up this list, right? Or And we'll take up, let's take the color contextual classes. So I'm going to copy this as it is and go and put it in my sidebar. And instead of this, I'm going to call it all uh, dark, right? Dark, dark theme and we'll make it black color. So just copy this. Right, so I'm using the contextual class and making it all uh, dark. Now here, let's see how, what is the output so far. So let's explore and reveal in Explorer and open it in a Chrome browser. All right, so this looks like this now. We have the sidebar, we have the main content, right? So we are, we are now going to put all the main nav bar and we'll also cover and make it the styling. So let's go ahead. And what I'm going to do here is in the IBM styles here, I will give this a class name. And here I'm going to call this sidebar. And this I'm going to call it main content, right? And in the sidebar, sidebar, I'm going to say the background color that I need is a dark color, right? So we can give something like 777 or we'll, we'll see that um, the coloring that we want to give. Uh, first, I'm going to put a maximum height and I'm going to call it 600 pixel, right? So to see the action, we'll need some more data. So copy these list some more time. And right, so we have it here. And I'm going to call this entire thing, the sidebar call three. So here I'm going to say, we didn't include this IBM style. So let's include that relevant equal to style sheet and href equal to IBM styles.css. Okay. So now we will see that a width is applied and we see that there is a scroll that's, that's coming up, right? Uh, but we don't want the scroll for the entire section. We want only for this, right, sidebar. So we'll fix that. Uh, let's get started. First, I'm going to remove uh, the list group so that, okay. And I'm going to have it here. And here it's, so we have to say overflow y scroll, right? So it will have its own independent scroll now. So you see here, now this is scrolling on its own. Right. So what I can do also here is we'll put a list group back. We'll style this and remove that. Okay. So let's go ahead and our requirement is we need a sidebar, which is black color. And then we also need a nav bar at the top and then the main content. Right. So I'm going to put the nav bar now. Um, let's go to documentation, grab any nav bar. Here I will go ahead and grab this nav bar here and put it here. In the again, I'll create a separate div container class so that it has its own, right? And inside this, I'm going to put the nav bar and instead of background light, I'm putting nav bar dark, bg dark, bg nav bar dark, right? So that's a theme that's provided. So, so now we see we have the dark nav bar at the top header, right? And we have the sidebar so I'm going to use the same color. So for that, we can grab it from here. And so we will right click inspect element and try and get this color and compute. So we need the background color. So I'm just going to go here and take this color here, right? Which is three, four. So you see, get the color. So it's easy to get all of that styling. If you're working with a designer, probably you will be given all of that in, right? So we have the background color applied. Now I don't want this list uh, color to be white. So we can say list background color, right? So I'm going to get this class and I'm going to add that here and we'll remove and say background color transparent. Okay, so now it's all black color, right? And now we just have to make the color change. So I'm going to make it color white. 
so now we see white color links right now we can add also border bottom one pixel solid gray color right so you see there is this division if you want like this again if you don't want it we can get rid right so now we have it here uh, i think the color is not white maybe we'll put it gray right so you okay so now it looks much better right and let's see how it so right so this looks exactly similar like the template that the one that we have now and we will get that so it's now time to add the main content right so how do we add main content let's go and add a table to our uh, main content and maybe we will have uh, the kind of looking up similar way right so let's go ahead and let's add a table here so we'll grab a table again nothing fancy do not think uh, this is the final product because this is something iteration right so you'll keep adding on top of it uh, design is always evolving design is always iterations uh, but here i'm trying to give you an idea of how you can uh, get something similar right so here i'm putting table now see so now we have a table and we have a header, the heading that we have put, right? It has its own scroll bar. Now we can add some padding to it and say the padding for this content should be padding four, right? So now it's it's aligned correctly. Now I want the background color for the main content to be slight gray, right? So we'll put background one color, now gray color. So I'm going to use D9, D9. Right, so this is the, or I can just say uh, the main content can be even more lighter. So I can say E9, E9, right? So now it's little much better gray than the one that we have. So this is how you go about the business. So now we want the uh, table to be white color, right? Because it has to be much readable form. So we are going to put a, a white color to our uh, table so that it's much readable. Uh, so well, let's go ahead and add that. So we'll put table, right? Or let's see the design once. And yeah, so the table is white color. So here we'll put table. It's a background color. Should be white, right? So there you go. So now we see it's aligned here, and we have the the heading. We have this uh, our links. Uh, we have our menu. We have our um, nav bar we have our sidebar we have our layout which is grid right so now let's try and so it looks like this so you can add some more details like these buttons etc you get the idea right so see now if you look at this layout this has the same kind of template um, and this has the gray color um, background with white color table and sidebar and this is if you think that's too much then we can reduce the content and make it 10 column and we can make it two column here and right so the that way we have much better uh, thing and we can just change these names to something simple text that way you don't it doesn't occupy uh, the entire thing so we can call something like home dashboard etc dashboard events so basically this, these are the navigation links that you would have, right? So I'm going to delete them and just copy paste the previous ones so that way we have small text, okay. right? Uh, so let's clean up a little bit. So you see the template is taking shape. It's coming up exactly the way that IBM Cloud design is. Again, it's nowhere close to the final product but you get an idea that how um, important these things are and how beautifully Bootstrap allows us to get the responsive layouts, designs done in no time, right? So we have the navigation here, we have the main content layout here, we have the navigation here. Similarly, we can also add footer, we can add spacing and all of that. So this becomes your template, much similar to the one that we see here on the IBM. Again, the fonts, everything that you can customize, but the idea you get it that how do you go about designing your layouts, all right?
so this i'll stop here i will let you take up take over from here uh, iterate on top of this keep adding more uh, elements ui elements like buttons etc make it look posh make it clean it up much better add more um, elegancy to it by adding elements by adding uh, details in terms of pixels the alignment and etc and once you are there i think uh, this will all be uh, shaping up good right so i'm going to leave you with one more example which i will cover it in the next episode where i will create this layout from cosmos website so we'll try and create one more uh, hands-on example and we will learn how to design this particular layout um, using bootstrap that's coming up in the uh, next uh, episode where I will again do a live project on covering the cosmos and in the third episode of the live I will show you how to do uh, so if you go to apple.com you will see a footer like this and that would be uh, like we'll try and design a uh, bootstrap footer using something like this layout right so another yet another practical that will add it to our website Thank you so much for joining in this episode. I hope you're enjoying. I hope you're learning. I hope you're getting inspired to learn Bootstrap to create your own templates. If you have any doubts, just let me know. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for joining. See you in the next episode.